Thank you so much. Um, sorry for the few minutes. Uh, technical issues. Um, my name is Julita Inca. And today I'm going to show you how could you do multiphysic simulations um, by using preconditioners. Um, I will show you how the preconditioners are going to speed up your simulations. So I divided this talk into four parts. I am going to talk about uh, how would you mind step, what step means, what they are the preconditioner, um, what are the multiphysic simulations I'm working on, and some HPC results. Um, finally, I'm going to lead with some conclusions. Uh, just, in, just in case, I think uh, you might interrupt me if somebody has questions. It's okay for me. So I will start by saying, uh, do you hear me right now, right? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. So if I'm telling you, mind the step, um, I, I am presenting here um, an image of uh, our step project in UKAA. I am right now working on UKAA, uh, which is the UK Atomic Energy Authority. So um, uh, step stands for a spherical to mark for energy production. This is an ambitious program or project uh, because it challenges professionals like they have to be involved in science as well as technology, as well as engineering, in engineering. And also you have to have some uh, math background, but in deep, like, linear algebra, for example, in my case, I had to restudy many concepts to, to do some simulations. Um, this project or step, the step team aims to generate electricity from fusion by 2040. Um, this is, I'm presenting uh, in the image, um, like a mock-up and you can see in the link in one, I will share my, my, my slides. So I am putting the link of what they are explaining more, what the step means, what are the components. So if you see, you have several components here, it's, it's a huge machine. So we need to understand how the large scale infrastructures uh, are working. So this, you have to orchestrate this comp each component to the other one. So um, we need to do scalable multiphysics. So we need a scalable multiphysics solutions and solvers as well. Um, we need to integrate, as I told you, orchestrating these computational simulations. How an engineer can know how to do these simulations in the computer how many resources do we need how many cores how many minutes how many hours do we have to wait for each simulation and um, as everyone in the world i think we want to have results uh, faster results like we cannot wait two or three days to see how was my simulation so my team is working right now in how to speed them up these simulations um, how we are mining this goal for the step. We are using, in this case, or lately, right now we are using preconditioners to speed up the simulations. Um, I am working right now with basic multiphysics um, because to have fusion, it's, it's a complex physics, uh, many, many phenomena and I am also aware about HPC resources. So I am a combining or doing the combination of these three concepts by using an, uh, a tool like which is called MOOS. MOOS stands for Multiphysic Object Oriented. Um, well, it does simulations and it's, uh, it is he's using, the, uh, because this project is, is huge, they are based on, this is an open source project, they are based on the finite element methods to do the simulations like uh, PDEs, like um, they, are, they are doing the discretization or the mesh using some softwares like LeapMesh 
and they are also do the they are doing the um, the solvers using Petsy. Petsy is another mathematical library. The, this uh, tool, Moose, it's very friendly, user friendly. You don't need to be worried about oh, how do I develop code for physics? Uh, they provide some kernels already they developed some standard equations like the heat conduction or they are using including earlier i think for for fluid they are they are using some kernels pre-built pre they have developed some so you can see more about training on moves on on his um website i am putting the website here oh okay i think <laughs> this is a my previous version. I will try to upload the the um, the latest version. Sorry, but uh, what I wanted to show about the Andy's work, Andy is my my boss. He was doing some simulations for a project, which is uh, um, they are doing a simulation for um, for Chimera. This is another project in UK, and he's combining this uh, multiphysics. He's combining uh, thermal uh, conduction um, in, uh, in, in steel um, materials, and he's also combining with displacement. So he, he is doing something something like very great. Um, he, he made it. He did a simulation using HPC by using around 500 um, cores. But um, OK. Let's go back to my work. Um, um, when we are talking about preconditioners, I don't know if I cannot see your faces, but I don't know how many of you are aware about this concept. Um, in the past, uh, when you were trying to do the simulations or the discretizations from PDEs using the final element method, you end up with solving matrices. And, and then it becomes to linear systems. And you can solve a, a linear system equation by using Gauss. That's what we all learn on the school. But I think this is quite um, simple when you have two variables, x and y, and some small um, uh, amount of, of, of equations. But what happened when we have several, like millions of equations? They might be, it's, an, it's a nightmare for a comp, uh, computation. It's very expensive computational if we are using just a simple computer. Um, when, uh, this is quite a history of math. We were uh, we were talking about that solving equations by using the direct methods, but then uh, there was cre a creation of iterative methods. I don't know if you are aware of iterative methods like LU, a lower upper. This is uh, algebra, um, the sort uh, uh, relaxation also methods. There were several iterative methods, and after that, because we were trying to do the simulation for three D three dimensional uh, simulations, and it has mm, several vi variables to to solve. We had to use preconditioners because some iterative methods couldn't converge. They they diverge sometimes, or they are very slow. In this case, and you see in the image on the left. You can see several iterations. Um, the preconditioner helps, like in this case, it's flattening this ellipse. Um, in, in only one iteration, you can have a converged solution. Uh, or where you, you can, in this case, what we are saying, or what the, the literature says, is like in, you don't have a good. Con, uh, Good, pre good condition to solve a problem. So it depends on the nature of the matrix, depends if your matrix is well conditioned or not. So preconditional help, basically, this is in one line summary, preconditional help to iterations method solve to, to have solutions. But during this year, we had 
several preconditioners in these 30 years in science. So I am putting another link when you can see more about preconditioners. What is a conditioning number? How do you know a, a matrix is well conditioned or not? So you have to have some notion about auto values, how to calculate those, um, how to calculate the spectral radio to have a, pre a good uh, preconditioner solution. So this is uh, more theory be be behind. But as I told you, Moose already has this uh, developed. So you don't have to worry if you are an engineer to want to apply these kind of simulations. You just have to, I will show you how to do the setup in, in a few minutes. So I'm just showing you like a little graphs of what is behind this. Um, I am talking also about the uh, Krylov subspace preconditioners method. So th there are other uh, studies like indicates like, okay, you have, preconditioners, but they work better by using the cryos of space. So it's a good, a crucial combination these days, like using uh, preconditioners with cryos of space preconditioners. Mm. And well, this study also motivates to have more effective preconditioners. There is another doctoral dissertation uh, study. They compare preconditioners on KSPs. But this study is more like mathematical. My study is more computational. Uh, the focus I am I'm, I'm giving to this study, right? Because he got some findings. Um, he had, well, don't worry if you don't understand these, uh, these letters, GMRS, what GMRS? I am putting in this same slide here. The GMRS stands for generalized minimal residual here. So you have the, the here the, the list of cryolops of space, basically. And what he found is the combination. OK, these work better with this. And the hyperboomer AMG also has this option. So the, each preconditioner also has several options inside. That's another project that others, uh, other people are doing around the world. So he found this, this um, what I did in um, these years, because it, this this work is taking me all around two years. Um, I was working with 42 preconditioners. I was testing first this in combination with these cryolosor spaces. This is a list. So my first uh, multiphysics simulation is very simple. I was starting by, I'm sorry, I was starting by working with um, two-dimensional static condition problem. So I had a, a, a steel plate uh, with the size of one meter um, in both sides, it's a square. And I established some boundary conditions. I just, in, uh, from the bottom to the top, fixed a fixed number. I set up like the temperatures in Kelvin this time. I'm sorry if I am not putting the, the how, um, that proper, or I mean, I'm just putting the, the numbers, but I didn't put the, the indicators of if I'm using centigators or Kelvin's. But I'm telling you now, this is Kelvin stuff. And I am putting since this number, 298. So I'm gonna increase the temperature until this, this, this value, 373. Um, from the sides, um, there is gonna be a steady value here. So the, I am going to use for the, um, the size from the right to the left. Uh, the heat flux will vary from steady state to um, 3000 uh, value. And you can see here in the image, um, this is the first, uh, the second zero or the, the initial stage. You have this um, temperature in this uh in the steel plate and um, in the end you um, we didn't reach the the full what i said but this is the limit so what i we got is is um around this this number of temperature and you can see the the, flu, the heat flux is working as well so mousse is working um but 
what how I did the measure of the HPC resources because uh, I am working with clusters and HPC clusters. I'm working right now with the Cambridge Service for Data Driving Discovery. We call it CSD3 cluster. It has um, 56 cores per node and each node has um, 192 gigabytes. So you can see more detail on this link. And for this particular problem, the 2D static heat conduction, I tested these three mesh. I started with a small mesh, with a medium mesh and the large. Why? Because I was, I want, my purpose was to increase the degrees of freedom. How I wanted to stress the, the problem, how, how many degrees of freedom are you able to, to handle? And, the conditions of this problem, the first the, the first problem of, of the heat conduction was like, I used the first like branch order and the type of element I used for this problem was the quad four and the solvent Newton, the, the results I, I'm gonna present are solving in, with using Newton. Um, the parallelization was done by using MPI from Moose. Um, at the beginning, I was working with the main stage. Uh, I, I'm putting this, like I'm filtering the outputs with this line because um, I thought, okay, I'm gonna measure the execution time, how how all the simulation takes at the time. Um, I did ten, ten, 10 runs per, per option. And I am including in this simulation for this heat conduction again, the creation of the mesh. I didn't use any split option. These are the results. So I was testing 360 combinations of preconditioners. Options, I mean, for hypermoomer AMG, this is one preconditioner, the other preconditioner ASM, ILO, GAM, Jacobi, B Jacobi, and LU. What about the others? Because I was testing 42. So I'm just putting or plotting the, the best ones. And um, for this small mesh, you can see um, that the hyperbomber ANG, the um, in Magenta is um, the ILU, um, the LU, LU are are presenting like a, a strong scalability. And most of in most of the cases, the preconditioners uh, reach their lowest time by using 32 MPI tasks. So these are the options like I'm using. So if I see this is very um, not efficient, uh, like you see in red, it is Jacobi. This is the first option uh, I got. And then I said, mm, this is not good. This is not a efficiency, a par a parallel efficiency. So I decided to just start or show you because I plot all the, the results. But for this conference, I'm just going to show you what I got from the Hyper Boomer AMG, which is who was the, um, who reached the lowest, the lowest time among all. I hope everyone is understanding me so far. I, I don't kind of see faces. So this is what I already say. Um, then what I, I'm gonna show you right now, it's about a Boomer AMG. I said, okay, the lowest was uh, Hyper Boomer AMG, uh, but this is the default, like in, 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 in black, you see. This is with no options. So this is the default option of Hyper Boomer AMG. I was able to reduce this time, yes. I was able to do it by using 32 MPA tasks and using other options. And this is not good. Uh, you see it is over. And this is like quite a strange behavior. So this is the option of CES, preconditioned on the left, KSP, like using a cryo service space and preconditioned on the left. So what if I just take out this? Um, I wanna just, uh, keep the best um, solutions, like those ones who scale well. 
So I have this. Um, I have these uh, results, but I I am not also. I, I during my study I said I don't have to only care about which one is faster. I have to also be aware what is the memory use, how many iterations you have, and what is the value of per, uh, uh, finally achieve. It has to be closer to zero. So these are the results. I know somebody in the audience might be so so very curious, and we say they say, "Oh, but this is we are talking about deciseconds. We are not talking even in seconds. How could you you do a comparison and studies to show me difference of deciseconds?" So I decided to increase the mesh. Now I'm working with the medium mesh to see if if we really have a difference between the performance of these uh, options of hyperbomer AMG. So with a large mesh, like in this case, this, these are the sizes, and they have the same um, the same um, options of hyperbomer AMG. And these are our results. We are not, in this case, using 32 MPI tasks. We have to use around 112 MPI tasks but uh, still they are very close we are talking about less than five seconds this is not um like oh rocket science what did i do okay i just decide to study whether the best cases below the default uh default configuration of hyper amg and decide to see what's going on here in regards to the time the memory and the values and the iterations taken so in both cases we have seen like um let's see here this is five and this is eight differences between the ksp types the conjugate gradient and fumrs in the conjugate gradient takes less memory in comparison to the fumrs but still, I, I, I cannot, uh, I have to emphasize, we are talking about minimum differences of seconds. So I decide to increase. So I large, I, I'm working now with larger mesh. So um, these are the, the elements in the mesh I'm working. And you can see now a quite difference of uh, in seconds. This is the default again. And we can see which one is worst is the, 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 the green one, which is the CGS option. So, okay, I I, I notice now this is very um, noticeable. Like, okay, you you cannot work with the CGS uh, cryo uh, space because uh, in in many cases you are, are are watching a bad behavior so i'm just gonna keep these and these are um they belong to the conjugate gradient and the fumrs so now i want i want i was worried should i precondition it to the left to the right or maybe to the left and right at the same time and using newton tr but um you can see the the newton tr is not good option I will show you now. I I decided to show you the, the best and the worst cases of these options. So the best one don't in, don't include the Newton TR. Um and this time what I'm using is the hyperbumer AMG P Max, which is a they are talking about levels in and this 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 option really really increase around more than 34 seconds here so it's good at the end i say oh i'm doing good my job but i don't feel like i am using very well the hpc resources i am not having the time while i am doubling their hpc resources so this is only difference of five seconds and seconds is, is, is no nothing well so okay 
I want to stop a little here because I want to say something. I I was using the full resources of this is a uh, four hundred and forty eight, but I was using the full resources. I mean, each node has fifty six, as I mentioned. So multiply by four is this. Multiply by three, and multiply by five. You understand? So I was using all the resources. I didn't do any distribution of of the course. I didn't care about the memory, how how the memory impacts in in this in this executions time. So, okay, I will show you in two more minutes how the distribution of the course it will improve this. But how about the other preconditioners. I was talking to you a lot of charts of hyperbomer AMG, but what about the LU, the the, the GAM, another um, um, multi-grid preconditioner? So these are the results that I got also for a medium, medium mesh. And you can still have the um, hyperbomer AMG is one of the best in comparison to Jacobi, or a sort the relaxation method or any other among these. When I am testing this with a large mesh, again, I can see hyperbomer ANG and GAN. Both are multi -crits. And I am not plotting where is ILU or LU. I can tell that in this case, even when I was trying to test with 56 cores, only one node, and I crashed the nodes of my cluster. I, I, I was doing the wrong job that. So um, that's, that's one lesson learned for me. And I think it could be useful in case you are doing some simulations using HPC. So this is the number of DOF for this large mesh. And this these are the, the, the computational resources that you can work with, but is not efficiency. So for the next uh, problem, because this is a displacement uh, in 3D, I am not talking anymore about 2D. This is a, a, a steel box in 3D with these dimensions. And I set just a basic setting of the rich -less boundary conditions um, in, the, in, in both sides, in Z and in, in Y, but I am changing a little display, oh no, I'm sorry, in Z and in X, uh, the, the display happens in, in Y. I am saying, okay, I'm going to do an, a force, uh, I'm going to do the displacement in like minus uh, um, one centimeter, uh, 0 0.01 centimeter. Um, you can see here, so the simulation works and moves so far in time zero, it's, it's zero, it's not Move, movement and the displacement happen and after the simulation ends. So these are the potion ratio. So these are the, the setup or the properties for this uh, simulation physical. Um, okay, my part is computational. So what did I do? This time I split the mesh for this uh, steel box. I use uh, the element type x80 and i just have our first lagrange order as well oh well it's here and uh, this is the number of degrees of freedom that i'm handling now it's more than 121 millions i am only focusing for it is this part the hyperboomer ng preconditioner and um, i am not testing the whole ksp types i'm only focusing in the top five, like you can see here, GMRS, um, a flexible GMRS, the GMRS, the conjugate gradient stabilized, and the big conjugate gradient stabilized. I am also including the using of no KSP type at all. And the method solver I'm using for this displacement 3D problem is the new tongue. I am using the boundary conditions of the rich LED and the parallelization as well is done by MPI. The only thing I'm changing here is how I am doing the comparison of the times. I am not including 
the multiplication of matrices or anything else. Just so I'm focusing, I learn how to 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 do the the comparison of the time. I'm just choosing the final element problem solve time. This 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 time I'm I'm comparing how the preconditioner works with the final element problem solving. So I think this is a fair comparison. Now I, instead of using the full notes per note, I'm requesting just take notes. Um, I am I am requesting the full course. You, you remember fifty six multiplied by ten. So this is our the, the course. But I am I wanted to to know what if I use the full resources fifty six and then if I have a link by these numbers. But seven has not. Uh, uh, you cannot divide this by two. So I said, okay, I'm going to try with five, two, one, and I did it like this for requesting different numbers of nodes. I am. Um, I was requesting ten, then then fourteen, then twelve, and eighteen. What do you think is the answer? This is a HPC strategy. We came up. We 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 uh, we're we're working uh, last year. So to confront this boundary bound behavior like we presented before for the thermal 2D. And this is also good to predict um, HPC resources for our simulations in the future. Like we'll handle millions of degrees of freedom as well. So far you don't have any questions. Justin, you don't see questions on the chart. Nope, there's no questions so far. Uh, we have about five minutes left. Oh, and then okay. We'll Thank you. I'm sorry. You okay, I will speed up my presentation as well, and we can precondition my presentation. And the, the answers, I will just show you the answers what I got with 10 nodes and 20 nodes and 14 nodes and 28 nodes. Now, this time you can see like, okay, we are having the time. Uh, it's not having, having, but it's quite close to the ideal behavior. So it is good. We are presenting now that, okay, this is, this is, a, this is something that I was expecting to, to happen. So it, it was good. We were able to increase. Like, if you see, I'm, I'm using 140 MPA tasks here and here as well. But if I am doubling the numbers of nodes, I can achieve less time. 200 seconds less. So this is good. And this is our, the results I got for, uh, for each case, the hyperbomer and the flexible and the GMRS and the conjugate gradients. I can tell like roughly like the GMRS didn't, didn't uh, solve because of memory. So you need more memory. I don't, rec I don't recommend if you have answers with using the GMRS of the conjugate gradient is good. And you can see as well here, if I am using the same numbers of MPIs, but different distribution, you can, in this time, we, we, we increase in 300 seconds. So this is very good. At the end, we, I think, this is the answer for my study. Like, the, the best combination is using the hyperbomer AMG with a conjugate gradient. We had a small standard deviation, which a guarantee uh, uh, homogeneous samples if you want to do, you want to repeat this experience. So this is replicable. Okay, this is another approach we had lately, this year. We were working, um, what if instead of changing the number of nodes, we are just working with one fixed number of MPI tasks. It's, it's, it's go we are going to have distribution in using 14 nodes, 18 nodes, 21 nodes, this is the number of nodes, and this is the distribution I use. You can see this is decreasing. We are decreasing in the, the time, and I'm only using the conjugate in the FGMRS, but I am uh, including this uh, Pmax2 option, and it was faster. So I, I want to emphasize that this option is very good. Um, and generally, I can say that the best option, again, for this displacement 3D problem or linear elasticity problem, it's worth it to use the hyperbomer AMG with the conjugate precondition on the left and using this option, Pmax2. The conclusion is, what are the best uh, 
combination of preconditioner uh, and KSP type I used for the heat conduction problem is the hyperbomber AMG with a flexible GMRS. Um, for the 3D problem, the linear CC problem, I, I found that this is the conjugated combination with the hyperbomber AMG and again with the option Pmax2. It will help to achieve faster execution time in comparison just to use the hyperbomber AMG by default. I want to emphasize again that the distribution of course across different nodes matters. It helps to overcome memory boundary issues. I, I will also suggest if you are doing some kind of studies similar, uh, using the splitting options to do fair comparisons to use the FEP time solver. And okay, and that's another lesson learned about the output. If I, I have to include the Oxidus because you have to provide uh, the image and it will affect the FEP time. Uh, these are the references I use for this study. And I want to uh, give uh, a really uh, um, thank you to these organizations, um, Genome, Fedora, IBM, Oak Ridge, um, USA, um, the universities I was involved as game because all this stuff to be a scientist is, is a long path. You need to know a math, science, some kind of physics, statistics, and you can follow me on Twitter if you are interested in helping me to understand why I I am using more nodes and I am decreasing the times. So I want to do some profiling work in the following months and to combine these two physics, like the thermal uh, in 2D and the displacement. Thank you so much. Have a good day.